Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. This week in Greater Manchester history, it's the first week of March. The first of March marks the anniversary of the passing of Tony Warren, the creator of Coronation Street. Now, I don't know anything about Coronation Street, but I've always loved that theme song. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I got to stay home from school. It was The Friendly Giant and then Mr. Dress Up. You probably wouldn't know those. Those are Canadians' children's television from the early 70s. Anyway, after Mr. Dress Up was Coronation Street. I never, ever watched it, but I always watched the intro, and seeing it meant I wasn't in school. 1st of March, 2010, Tony Warren, the creator of the long-running British soap opera Coronation Street, passes away at the age of 79. Warren wrote all 13 episodes of the show's initial run in 1959 and continued to write scripts until 1968. The show was originally called Florizel Street, but was changed to Coronation Street over a bottle of whiskey. Warren also wrote critically acclaimed novels in the 1990s, including The Lights of Manchester. He made a cameo appearance in the show's 50th anniversary episode in 2010. Warren's contribution to British television has been widely recognized, and his legacy lives on in the ongoing success of Coronation Street. The 2nd of March is John Gardner's birthday. Now, I'm not a big fan of choral music, but I'm sure he's somebody's favorite. March 2nd, 1917. John Gardner is born in Manchester, England. He was an English composer who upheld the romantic tradition in music. One of his most popular compositions is the Christmas Carol, Tomorrow Shall Be My Dancing Day, which has been featured on numerous Christmas albums. Gardner produced around 250 works, including symphonies, operas, and works for various mediums that included a number of works of real distinction. Gardner's love of polyphony and Baroque development can be seen in his orchestral and instrumental pieces. His fascination with jazz rhythms and the style of jazz pianist Bill Evans can be heard in some of his shorter works. He continued to compose well into his 80s and conducted the premiere of his Irish Suite a few days after his 80th birthday. He was appointed CBE in 1976. John Linton Gardner died the 12th of December, 2011. 3rd of March is Brian Cox's birthday. He's always a bit of fun. 3rd of March, 1968, it's Brian Cox's birthday. Brian Cox is a physicist, best known for his science programs and popular science books. He's a professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester and also the Royal Society Professor for Public Engagement in Science. Cox has presented science programs such as the Wonders of series and has written books including Why Does E Equal MC Squared? and the quantum universe. Before becoming an academic, Cox was a keyboard player for the British bands Dare and Dream. He studied physics at the University of Manchester, earning a Bachelor of Science degree with first class honors and a Doctor of Philosophy degree in high energy particle physics. Cox has also worked on the Atlas experiment at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Happy birthday, Brian. The 4th of March is the anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's inauguration. We did a video about his statue in Lincoln Square in Manchester a while ago. Check it out. It's about the cotton famine. March 4th, 1861, the first inauguration of Abraham Lincoln as the 16th President of the United States of America. This sets in motion events that will see the people of Greater Manchester starving and destitute. It became known as the Cotton Famine. During the American Civil War, the Union's blockade of southern ports prevented the export of raw cotton to Britain, which it relied heavily upon for textile manufacturing. As a result, cotton prices skyrocketed and the mills of Lancashire had to shut down, leading to widespread unemployment and poverty. The consequences were devastating. The British government tried to alleviate the crisis by importing cotton from other countries, providing relief funds, and encouraging workers to find alternative employment. The cotton famine had significant economic and political consequences, including increased demands for workers' rights and the rise of free trade movements in Britain. The 5th of March is a sad anniversary. It marks the death of the first female officer lost in the line of duty in Greater Manchester. 
Sadly, she wouldn't be the last. 5th of March, 2001, P.C. Allison Armitage, age 29, was killed while investigating a stolen car in Oldham. She was waiting for a recovery truck when a man got in and reversed away. P.C. Armitage tried to stop him, but was run over several times. She died four hours later in hospital. The incident occurred on the day she was to be recommended for her role in arresting six men involved in an armed robbery. At a memorial service in 2001, then Prime Minister Tony Blair said, I wish I had known her. She was by all accounts a remarkable young woman and an excellent police officer, someone who engaged in often difficult and dangerous work. P.C. Allison Armitage was the first female officer in Greater Manchester to be killed in the line of duty. You gotta love George Formby. Besides being great fun himself, without him, there wouldn't be any Beatles, no Beatles, no Oasis, and so on and so on. George Formby was an English actor, singer, and comedian, born in 1904 in Wigan. He was best known for his unique style of playing the ukulele and his cheeky sense of humor. Formby's career spanned three decades, during which he became one of the UK's most popular entertainers. His signature song was Leaning on a Lamppost, which he first performed in the 1937 film Feather Your Nest. He was also known for his comedic roles in films such as No Limit and Keep Fit, which showcased his energetic performances and witty humor. In addition to his successful film career, Formby was also a prolific recording artist with hits such as The Window Cleaner. His legacy as a ukulele player and entertainer has continued to inspire musicians and comedians alike, and he remains a beloved figure in British popular culture. George Formby passed away on the 6th of March, 1961. I do love all cars. I grew up loving 57 Chevys and the like, but a Morris Minor will turn my head too. March 7th, 2015, the one millionth Morris Minor is sold at auction for £25,760. Although it wasn't produced at the Morris Motors factory in Chorlton cum Hardy, the factory was responsible for the production of many of the one million Morris Miners made between 1948 and 1971. The Chorlton cum Hardy factory was an essential manufacturing site for Morris branded vehicles for almost 70 years, employing thousands of workers and contributing significantly to the local economy. Originally built to produce aircraft engines during World War I, the factory was later converted to automobile production. It was a crucial hub for Morris Motors, producing various models including the Morris Oxford and Morris 1100. It played an essential role in British automotive history. There you have it, the first week of March in Greater Manchester history. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that good YouTube stuff. We're trying to find a significant event for every day of the year in Greater Manchester history. There's still a lot to go, so leave a comment if you can think of any. We'll be sending out one of our Manchester Bee mugs to a random contributor, so leave a comment. You might win yourself a Manchester Bee mug. And if you don't, you can always go over to wickedacorn.com and get yourself one.